Hello and welcome back to my Let's Build a Titan Rooster series. Uh, this video will be part 3 and we will be fitting the ESCs and cutting the motor wires to length. should be a reasonably short video. Um, those of you who haven't been part of the other videos, I'll put some links in to go back to the earlier videos to explain what it is that I'm doing. Um, do not consider this video to be a guide on how to be the best soldier in the world. I get by, I can do the job. Um, I'll see what I can probably get some good shots in there and, um, as we go along. Right, let's begin. So, things that you want to have when you're doing your soldering. I have um, one of these. It's really useful for cleaning the tips of your uh, your soldering iron. Um, I use a soldering iron with a very small tip. Um, makes it nice and easy to get in and out. I'm running about 400 degrees C. So, these are quite thick wires. Um, and if you get on and get off quickly, it doesn't cause any problems. I've never done any damage through heat. I have soldered things badly, but I've never done anything with heat that's caused a problem. Um, so that's that. Um, shouldn't really need any other tools. I do have a set of wire clippers and a set of uh, um, sheath removers. I mean, I probably was using my fingers because most of these cables are reasonably good from that perspective. Um, I'll also be using um, one of those multi-arm handy hand things. These are fantastic. Uh, I can't remember where I got mine from, probably like uh, Hobby King or something like that. This got lots of arms. It's a really heavy base, so it's nice and easy to work with. So this is really pretty good. Um, so I am going to start by soldering up the ESCs um, and getting tinning up the pads. So um, don't need to do anything on this back end. So the back end has the positive ground um, and the signal and ground wires. Um, so that's that. Um, then you've got the three contact points for each of the motor wires. Um, on the older, um, in the older world, you used to have to swap one of the cables over because some of your rope or two of your motors run the opposite way around. Um, thanks to the ones of modern technology, you don't need to do that anymore. So I will just solder directly onto these. So first thing I'm going to do is tin these pads. So that's now my four ESCs all done, all soldered up and ready to go. Um, yeah, so I use, um, I was going to talk about this, I use uh, the 6040 solder, uh, lead free, oh no, lead, lead is solder, apologies, 3mm, um, um, just because it's easy to use. I've run out, I'm running out, so hopefully I won't need any more for this build, um, but I've ordered some more anyway, but that's what I use and it's quite good stuff really. Now, moving on, um, we need to now cut our motor wires to length. So, we are going to place our drone down, get the wires out of the way. So, you want your ESCs as close to the centre of mass as humanly possible, so you want them in around about here, like so. Um, um, I'll fix these in later on, but what this allows me to do is know how long I want my cables to be. So I'm reckoning around about here, just to give myself a little bit of wiggle room. Okay, so, there you go. Um, so, out of interest, how much additional cable is there on this? So. That's how long it is. So it is. Cool. Hang on. Got a tape measure here. So I have about 35 centimeters worth of additional cable here. So I need to measure how long one of the other ones are. But that is a lot of cable. But it's good cable, so it's useful for various bits and pieces. Um, never throw bits of cable away. Always keep them. So get those nice and short. Um, and the next thing is to tin these ends so they go really nicely with the solder. So 
as always you put a tiny little dot on the soldering iron and then just heat the wire and lead the wire onto the cable it should give you a nice solder joint you've had, if you're not happy 100% with any of the solders you've done, get a piece of wood, hold it down, get something that you can put some pressure across the cables with. Can you see? Yep. Hopefully you can see that. So then that's all in. And I would then fix that to the arm, leaving a little bit of room wiggle rim on the cable. I mean you could chim that down a bit more but that's how that is. So now it's simply a case of rinse and repeat for each of the corners. So I'm just going to get on with that and then show you the end results. Right, so that should now be all of my ESCs on, so uh, ignore the gaggle of wires that are all over the place, um, they'll be cut down shortly, so each of the ESCs are done, some of them are better than others, but they're all good looking solder joints, they're all strong enough, um, one of the things you find is it's a common issue that if your solder joints aren't particularly good, that you can have issues with the um, when you're firing at the motors that it doesn't quite initialise properly or anything along those lines. Um, so yeah, that's happy of that, that'll do to start with. So I think the next thing to do is to try and start fitting the PDB. Rightio, so the next step is to do our PDB. So the PDB is where all the power comes from for your drone. Um, this one has a voltage regulator built into it so you can see how much life is left in your batteries. Um, it has also got the video transmitter built into it so that's that big bit at the bottom there. Um, so it is trying to go all in one. Now I've used one of these before but I haven't used one with the, the video transmitter on it so uh, that's quite good. So it does minimize the amount of soldering we need to do on it um, because most of the stuff will go via this ribbon cable on here, but I do need to put an XT60 on it, which is the what your battery connects to, um, and I need to put the solder on the corners and for the signal wires, so everything goes into this and then goes up into the flight controller. So when you look at this, you can have this many, many ways around, there's often people have it sideways, like so, and have it coming out of the side, you can have it backwards like the so. I'm going to have it forwards um, so I can have the battery connector coming out of the top here. Um, that's what I've done with my chameleon and I'm going to do the same here. So um, that's what I plan to do. So the first thing we need to do is make up an XT60 cable. So to make up an XT60 cable I'm going to use my well, part of my smoke stopper that I've made. So that's just one of these you can find how to make one line. Uh, I'm just going to put that onto here. The reason I'm doing this is because it helps the, he the heat sinking out of the XT60 when you're putting it together. So I'm just going to put that there. Um, right. So I'm then going to use some uh, 16 gauge uh, silicon wire. So I'm going to be reasonably generous and then I'll cut it back. So let's just start with cutting those two. Reasonable length. Okay. So soldering an XT60 is a bit of a pain in the arse. I just realised that this is not in screen. There we go. So if you're trying to get an XT60 soldered, you need to get sold enough solder into this sort of barrel that you can then put your cable into it and it's not, some people find it easy, 
I find it a little bit challenging, so if you hear swearing, that's what it will be. One of the things I was always scared about when I started um, building drones was that I wasn't a very good solderer. I'm still not a particularly good solderer today, but I bought loads of bits that meant that I didn't have to do soldering, and I found that actually it was better off just me learning how to do it. And um, I started by just getting some crap electronics and soldering that together, and that gave me what I needed to have. So now let's get the XT60 back out. What we're going to try and do is we want to make sure that the pool in here is as liquid as possible and then put the end in and make that so it all goes into a nice one big single piece. Right, so that's that one done. First you don't succeed, try a little bit in a different way. Right, so that's now on, and then I can then put this little sheath over the back of it to protect the connections. There we go, and that is an XT60 ready to go, and that should be relatively strong. I might put this little bit of um, hot glue in there at some point just to make sure nothing gets in there, but realistically that is ready to go, and that is strong enough to do what I need it to do. Excellent. Right, now we need to fit it to the PDB. So having done a little bit of a measure, I think I want about this much um, cable. So I'm just going to snip the extra off here. The good thing about an XT60, if it's a bit long, you can always just strap it down um, using a battery strap on the battery itself and that seems to always be a better way of doing it than having a really short one that you're running way too tall. So, strip the wires again, give them a good old twist. And the same process you've seen a couple of times now. When Okay, so my XT60 is ready, and I've now got my PDB. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tin up each of these um, pads um, so I can make sure they get a good connection on this. So the last thing I need to do on this side is fit the do the audio cable um, because I want to do audio from my camera. So finally, I'm just going to rotate this around, have it facing in on itself. Um, just because I want it to get in the way of anything else. So. controller can go in like so. So then this comes out of the top here. Um, I've got a bit of a cable management challenge ahead of me but it will fit together nicely. 
Right, thank you very much for those who have um, watched this video. Um, next time we'll be doing soldering to everything together for the PDB and we will also be putting on the flight controller and doing some soldering for that. Thanks very much for your time. See you next time.